And then even then, if I remember correctly, it wasn't the first two or three games. It took about five games to get Amari completed at the five and get it together. I was still a little nervous about going in because what are you going to do about this? What are you going to do about that? And, you know, and you have other people that, you know, on your staff or just now and all in good faith don't believe in, you know, Amari's not going to be able to play the five. Right. So it took a while to, to you know, get some – toughness and do what I thought was right. So 2004 off season heading into that 2004, 2005 season where Nash wins MVP. Did you see stuff? Did, were there discussions with management? Did you say the skills that this guy showed in Dallas will in your mind, like fit perfectly with what I want to do? Or was it what you alluded to earlier where, you know, you, you walk in the gym, those are the groceries and you figure out what meal to make once you, once you have the ingredients. Well, you know, it's funny because Steve Nash lived in Phoenix uh, in the offseason, or he had, a, or he came by there. I don't know. He spent some time in Phoenix. I do know that when he was with Dallas. And in September, the guys would get together and just play. And so I'd be up there just watching them just play, and Steve would be on one team. And that team was just, it was like bam, 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 the ball was going all over the place. And, and you could feel, man, that's good. And so when the time came for a free agent, uh, sure. I mean, that guy would be plug him in and we can we can really open things up. And he's just the point guard you're looking for. And there because there was some serious doubts. And the only reason we got him is because uh, Dallas didn't offer him a contract, did not sign him back. And so otherwise he wouldn't have come. He was happy in Dallas and Dirk and him had that uh, relationship. No way we would have got him, but they didn't offer him a contract. And so we were able to step in and get him. And, you know, obviously it changed my whole life, changed a lot of people's lives. And he was so good for the community and uh, and the team. But going that summer, and one thing I like to do as a coach is I'm with the general manager all the time. And I like getting in the office early, general manager being there, and we just talk basketball. And I did that with Brian. I was lucky. And then also – uh, Jerry Colangelo, who owned the team at the time, and we just sat and talk. And I remember distinctly sometime halfway through the summer after we got Nash, got the team, they were working out a little bit, and he's going, how, you know, how are you going to play him? And, you know, I'm almost, you know, I don't know. And um, he says, well, you know, who are your best five best players? And I told him. And he goes, well, play him. I go, seriously? I <laughs> mean, he goes, yeah, I think because they were, you know, back in the day with Rex, Rex Chapman and those guys, Danny Ainge, yep. they played small ball. They had uh, Kid and Kevin Johnson, right? And I'm not sure if they'd ever roll all three out because Nash was a, a I rookie. I think a little bit, but probably just to look at it yeah. as a freak show. But they probably should have, yeah. Then it wasn't. But I always believe too, and I, I had this coming from Europe. The more more point guards you have on the team, the better the team's going to be. Whether that's a point center, you know, there's a lot of guys that are point guards. Anytime you have the ball in your hand, you're the point guard. And so if that ball moves around, you have your hand. If you're not shooting it, if you're going to make a play, you're the point guard. And so all the, if you have five guys that can do that, I mean, just think how good your team. And that's why Golden State's so good. They have a lot of guys that can make plays, and you can spread it out. So when he gave me that encouragement, a new management's with me. We have the players. Why wouldn't we do it? And it took a little bit, uh, even in training camp, to uh, get over the hump and get to exactly that. And then it all kind of fell out in our hands that that was the best way to play them. Is, is there, I mean, there's discomfort because you're trying something new and, you know, if, right. if it goes wrong. But is there explicit discomfort about what you give up on defense? And, of course, the criticisms over the years right. of, I mean, you, you guys and your teams that you've coached have had some monster point differentials, 60-plus wins right. from, from in my, in my world, championship-level teams, um, you know, right there with the best teams. But right. when you're easing into this in, in day one, is part of the apprehension, like, man, what's it going to look like or feel like if we give up a 35-point quarter or something right. like that? Right. Oh, without a doubt. And a lot of times uh, – that goes from the history of the league. You're only graded on how good your defense is. And it's like, well, you, do we want to lose 80, 70, you know, 80 to 70 or 
110 to 100. <laughs> it was a difference, you know. So, you know, we spent, you know, don't, I don't mind the criticism that our defense should be, could have been better. Probably if you have the best offense, it's probably the reason you don't win a championship. It's because of defense, okay. You know, I get it to a certain extent, although I do think winning championships comes down to hitting big shots and big moments, getting some calls, be sure you don't get injured. There's a lot of factors that go into winning a championship that things just have to kind of click. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I, I don't like that we didn't spend any time on it, that we didn't talk about it, that we didn't. And that, that's all BS, you know, because that's all we thought about. We knew the offense was good. So why? I mean, well, we, we're not that dumb. So like we're sitting there, you know, how can we get our defense as good as our offense? And you do give up stuff. But we always went, and I forget, one of my assistant coaches said that we're not going to out Shaq Shaq. So if you know, Shaq was at an L.A. right in that period before he got traded to Miami. And that summer, we kind of made the team to where to get out of our little division or conference, we got to beat the Lakers. They got Shaq. Well, I can trot out any center that you want to talk to in that area that we could get. He was going to destroy them. So let's – Put Amari there, okay, he's going to score. He's going to score anyway. But now he's at least got a guard on the other end. And can we make up by point? Let's say he's worth our, our, our point. Our, our center we get out there, gets us five points, he gets 35. Or he gets 40, and then Amari gets 30. You know, it's like, okay. So it's uh, uh, we looked at the difference of points and what it can produce and how can we beat them. We did it with Golden State. How can we beat Golden State? How, you know, we wanted to win a championship. Second place, fourth place, fifth place, second place. You know, it's like, doesn't matter, does it, if you don't win a championship? And you know, we knew regular season we'd be good, but can we beat these guys when it comes down to it? And a lot of the philosophy went into that, and how do you develop a team to beat the best team in the league? Thanks for listening. You can find the full episode of this Thinking Basketball podcast on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, or wherever you enjoy podcasts.